hostiles. 12 o'clock is six miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Years ago, online, some of you might remember, they had these games that you could download, usually for Facebook or some other social media, where they showed a very detailed, lavish image, and in that image, you had to pick out little details of things that were hidden. Well, in today's video, I'd like to show you a couple of things in these two images that we've talked about recently that are inconsistencies that make me believe that these aren't just fiction, that these are real. Somebody recreated these from memory and put them online. Why they would turn up in a search for Antarctica, I have no idea. But we're going to start with the image on the left. And this is something that I should have seen a long time ago. Let me max this out real quick. It has to do with this bridge over this gully. Now, you would ask yourself, wait a minute, that's just standard bridge. Clearly, there's some type of a water flow underneath here. They need to have a way to get from this pathway over here to this pathway over here. Well, as you can see, there's very regularly spaced lighting here. But the bridge itself, I want you to look very closely at the surface of it. You see how there are little slits cut in the walkway? That's for drainage. Now, I want to show you guys something, and it's going to kind of blow your mind. You're probably going to want to sit down. This is a standard medium girder bridge. U.S. Army Engineers, Afghanistan 03. Do you see the slits up here? Let me see if I can bring up just the image and zoom it in. You see what I'm talking about? This is a U.S. Army bridge in Afghanistan. Look at this bridge from this quote-unquote artwork that comes up under an Antarctica search. 
And the more I look at this image, way off in the distance here, you see someone just standing directly in the middle of this path. It almost looks like somebody on duty, on guard duty. Now, this image here, of course, doesn't have rails, but there are a fixtures for that if they wanted to. This bridge, and I'll give you the link to this uh, article, it is Think Defense, Medium Girder Bridge, U.S. Army Engineers in Afghanistan. That's this bridge. That is this bridge. Now, over here, to the right, there is this building. And I something was just off about it. Let me see if I can continue to zoom this and make it a little bit easier to see. Something was just off about it, and it dawned on me what it was. Why would the artist have put awnings, retractable awnings, over the window and door? One that was out and one that was in. Why in some underground fantasy ice cavern would you need awnings? What would be the purpose? Well, if you're generating heat, there would probably be some type of a constant rain from the ceiling of the cavern. And the only reason that you would put an awning over a window like this, a retractable one, would be to keep the water off. That's all I can think. But this second level up here of this building, there's a light system up here. And so the question you would have to ask yourself is, how are they generating power? How are they generating power? Well, there's a lot of ways. I mean, there's solar, but... And, of course, we've shown images of generators and smoke, but you would think that would require even more engineering. Which brings us to this other image. Now, it's a very old house. Let me see if I can get it center here so everybody can see. But there's something on it that is just off, and this is what it is. Lightning rods. This house has lightning rods. Now, lightning rods were invented in the 1750s, but didn't really become chic until about, oh, the 1900s. This is a, but this building is like 15th century. So this is a retrofit. This is a retrofit. Whatever this is or wherever this is, it's exposed to the sky somewhere. Unless there's lightning underneath the ice sheet, which I very much doubt. I also noticed something very strange here. There were I thought there were two towers. There's actually three. This third one is partially hidden. Now, some of you are probably like, wait a minute, but what does this have to do with what's going on under the ice in the other picture? Well, I think I figured out how they're generating power. flowing water. Because if they were generating heat underneath the ice or somewhere where there was a large amount of ice, it would cause melt. Flowing water can be harnessed to create power. And that's kind of what I think is happening here. One second. Sorry about the uh, motion of the images. Something else that bothered me about this image is that they cut off half the building. Why would the center of the image be, generally speaking, the guy on guard duty? Why would they cut off half the building? Well, if you look above here, that's exactly how they would do that. It probably was classified. It was probably something that couldn't even be, this might have had to go through channels to get put out, 
even in this form, as art. It looks like, up here in the upper right, there is some type of flowing water. If they had turbines, or they had some type of generator system, it would, of course, be gravity-fed. The water could be moving its way around, and this could be what the bridge was for. And this is a guy on guard duty. This is a military bridge. And the even spacing of the lights here, it almost looks like there's some kind of cable or power generation going around this corner. I don't think this was fantasy fiction at all. I don't think this was just out of somebody's mind. I think this was a real place that somebody attempted to recreate in art. Because that's just way too much of a coincidence. Why would they create a military-style engineer, U.S. Army engineer bridge in an image like this? Why would there be lightning rods and silos? These might be um, steam towers. Because, of course, you have all of this ice and snow. There was just an article out today about something that happened in India where a glacier let loose and there was this huge flood and it overwhelmed a power plant. I don't know if you guys have heard of this or not. It's kind of a hard thing to talk about on... Um, YouTube because, you know, it caused a lot of damage and it caused, well, I'll leave it there. I'll let you guys just look up the article. But this is what I think we're looking at. Basic, simple engineering. And one second. Sorry, I didn't have this up the way I wanted to. This image I've used before as well, and I thought it was fantasy fiction, but it's not. It's actually Czechoslovakia. It's Prague. In the, I guess, pardon me, Czech Republic. This is a real place in Turkey, and this was an amazing find. A man renovating his home discovered a tunnel to a massive underground city in 1963, a man in the Nevshire province of Turkey knocked down a wall of his home. Behind it, he discovered a mysterious room and soon discovered an intricate tunnel of system, pardon me, an intricate tunnel system with additional cave-like rooms. What he had discovered was the ancient Derinkuyu underground city in Turkey. Now, this is an artist's representation of something that is real. And you can see these aren't little crawlways. I mean, these are... This is cattle and livestock. You can see how big these rooms are in comparison to the people. 10, 12 feet high. Home to 20,000 residents. I'll give you the link to this article and you can read the details. It's absolutely amazing what these people were able to create. That stayed hidden until 1963 underneath Turkey. Underneath one of their main cities in a settled area, an area that had been settled for thousands of years. If that's the case in Turkey, and I really love this image because it shows, you see this little tiny square here? This little tiny square here, and I think this is actually big, comparing it to New York State. The entire state of New York would fit inside this little square. What could be hidden down here? Especially, not just under the ice, but underground. If something like that could stay hidden in Turkey for that long. All the way up until 1963. This is what I think they're keeping hidden. Basic Simple basic engineering. 101. And I think this image gave it up. Accidentally, not meaning to, because this is just way too much of a coincidence for me. Looking at this, this could have been engineered all the way back to the 60s. 
especially when you look at the building technique over here and how all this looks. Why would there be awnings? Why would there be retractable awnings on an artistic building in Antarctica? Why would a guy just be standing here in the middle of this path? He's not holding a sword. He's not defending against some assault from orcs or dragons or some other ridiculous thing here. It's just a guy standing in the middle of this archway. This is a military outpost, you mark my words. This is an artist's representation of a military outpost. So you'd have to ask, why? What are they doing there? And I'll leave it there. Like, share, subscribe. Would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tech they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond, Crimson King. Isn't the land a sight off-world, sir?